From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Trouble Off San Lorenco. Perhaps it is difficult for those who have never visited exotic ports like Casablanca, Algiers, Tripoli, and Tunis to picture Becarata. But Becarata is much like those other ports, except that it's a trifle dirtier, a bit more sinister, a little more completely steeped in the dark mystery of Africa. At one end of its narrow, winding principal street is the Café du Diable, the Café of the Devil. It presumably gets its name from the painted figures on its walls, but many claim it has been named for its owner, a small, goateed Monsieur André Devereux. André, the quietest walk there. Hmm, extremely pretty. Maybe another entertainer looking for a job. You're a fool. Did you ever see an entertainer who dressed demurely? She's a small-town girl who has perhaps come over here to serve as a missionary. Shall I go over and see what she wants? No. Just let her stand there being uncomfortable. By the time she works up enough courage to walk over here, it will be easier to say no to whatever request she makes. Ah, look, she's leaving. Perhaps she's afraid of all the rough-looking devils. <laughs> the, the ones painted on the walls. Mm, uh, Mademoiselle! Miss! Yes? Uh, you are looking for someone? Uh, there is something I can do for you? Uh, I think maybe I made a mistake. This, this couldn't be the place I... You're frightened. There's no need to be afraid of André Devereaux. You are Mr. Devereaux? Then this is the right place. Mm, oui. I'm Della Carter, Simon Carter's granddaughter. He wrote that you were his friend. Yes, he is a friend of Simon Carter's, all right. I can speak to the young lady without your help. Of course, Andre, of course. A dear friend of Simon Carter. What did you mean by that? Oh, to be truthful, my dear Miss Carter, I'm just a trifle, shall we say, angry with your grandfather. For several weeks, I permitted him to occupy a room back of the cafe without charge. Yes, he wrote that you were very good to him. Uh, then, when he left for the Congo, I financed his expedition. It's been four years now, and he's never repaid the money advanced. Nor did he ever send me my share of the gold he was so sure of finding. But, Mr. Devereux, something's happened to him. I know it. May we? Many times things happen to white men who go into the jungle in quest of gold. Gold they never find. But Grandfather did find gold. A fortune, I guess. What? About a year ago. It was after that that something happened to him. I know he's in terrible trouble someplace. Uh, come into my office, my dear. I want you to tell me all about it. If uh, your grandfather's in some kind of trouble, André Devereaux will help him. He said you were his friend. Mais oui, I am his friend. So he found gold, huh? <laughs> you see, yeah. grandfather was always the character in the family, wandering all over the face of the earth and having all sorts of strange experiences. I see, Della. Well, Dad and Mother passed away about six years ago. After that, Grandfather and I lived together in a tiny cottage. Oh, lovely. Oh, it was nice. But all we had to live on was my small salary as a lower grade teacher. Grandfather wasn't content to let me support him, and I guess he still craved for adventure. So he came to Africa to find a fortune in gold? Huh? Yes. First I had his letter from here, the one in which he mentioned you. Then there was a long silence. And at last, a letter came saying that he was on his way home. That all the wealth he had accumulated during the years was mine. That he was bringing it to me. So, he didn't intend to give me my share? Oh, I'm sure he would have sent it to you. He was very honest. Well, he didn't come home with the gold anyway, I assume. No. I never saw nor heard from him after that. Six months ago, I quit my job. I decided then to come to Africa and find him. Or at least learn what had happened to him. I can understand your feeling, my dear Della. André Devereux will help you in your mission. You and I will find out what has happened to your grandfather. And who can tell, we may also recover the fortune he discovered in the Congo. (laughs) 
In just a moment, we shall find out what happens to Della Carter and Monsieur Andre Devereaux when they enter the jungle and meet Tarzan. In civilization, it is difficult to learn about matters that transpired four years ago. In the jungle, it is almost impossible. But Della Carter was determined to find out what had happened to her beloved grandfather. And Andre Devereaux had a driving will to get the wealth that Simon Carter had mentioned in his letter. And so the two led their safari deep into the Congo jungle where the old man had last been seen. Their trail led them eventually to the seacoast cabin of the Lord of the Jungle. Could this be it? Yes, this must be the cabin the native mentioned. A bus! We will stop here then! I don't hear anyone inside. It looks deserted, all right. But if this tip doesn't pay off, I don't know where we can go from here. Grandfather's last letter was postmarked Cape Town. Perhaps if we headed in that direction... It might have been carried thousands of miles before it reached the Cape Town post office. And our small safari could never get that far. No, I suppose not. But where else can we head next? We, we can head back to Bekurata. I've been a fool to invest further money in a lost cause. I've financed your grandfather's expedition. And now I've borne the expenses of this ridiculous safari. But we must go on. Grandfather may be dying. Maybe he's been captured by cannibals or... Oh, oh, oh please, Audrey. Let's... Go. I'm going back to Bekurata. But oh, you're coming with me. You'll earn the money I've spent on this foolishness. Andre Devereaux does not make bad investments. I, I won't go back with you. I... <coughs> And there will be more slaps, unless you listen. There will be no more slaps. What? What? Do not be afraid, young lady. Oh, I thought you were some huge animal. I'm sorry if I frightened you. I am Tarzan. Ah, we have been looking for you. I am André Devereaux of Becurata, and this is Della Carta, an American girl. Why did you slap her? <laughs> it was just a slight misunderstanding, that's all. A Latin temper inflamed by the jungle eat. Actually, we are genuinely fond of each other. Is, is that not right, ma chérie? Yes, yes, I guess so. I overheard your slight misunderstanding. I was in a tree almost directly overhead. You see, I, I have grown unused to civilized people, and I plan to remain in hiding until you've gone away. Uh, what made you decide to come down? I have always reacted strongly to man's cruelties and woman's tears. I don't usually cry. It's just that... We've come so far, and every lead we've followed has come to nothing, and... From my hiding place in the trees, I heard that you searched for your grandfather. Yes, and some distance from here, we met a native who told us about how you'd saved a man from a wild boar. From the native's description, we thought that the man you saved might have been my grandfather. His name is Simon Carter. Do you know him? Yes, I know Simon Carter. When did you see him last? It was more than a year ago. Where did he go when he left here? Only the jungle can answer that. Did he have gold with him? Did he mention a fortune? I am a man of the jungle, André Devereaux. I do not try to disguise my actions or my feelings. I do not like you. And I do not like this cross-examination. Still, because of this girl, you are invited to come inside my cabin. I will tell you what I know of Simon Carter. Then you don't actually know whether he'd found the gold before he arrived here. I have told you all I know. He'd been in the jungle for several years before our paths crossed, and he had gone through many horrible ordeals. Yes, yes, yes. Go on. He rested here for several weeks and then left. Uh, did he have any large sacks or boxes with him? Only a humble carpet bag and a few crude mining tools. The carpet bag? Uh, was it heavy? Uh, heavier than it would have been uh, uh, had it contained only clothing. Yes, it was heavy, but I did not look inside. If it contained gold, that was Simon Carter's business, not mine. And that is the last question I shall answer you. I only meant to... I shall prepare food for you, the young lady, and your bearers, and then you must leave. And Miss Carter... Miss Carter! Gone. She must have... Uh, I didn't hear her leave. If but... she's wandered beyond the edge of the clearing, she... <laughs> no mother lion preparing for a feast! <laughs> Tarzan dashed from the cabin, crossed the narrow clearing in a few great leaps, and hurtled himself into the middle level of jungle growth, traveling in the direction from which Numa's roar and the cry of the girl had come. 
He moved with incredible speed, and although Della had wandered far from the cabin, Tarzan's overhead flight brought him quickly to the place where she stood with her back to a huge rock, facing an enormous angry lion. And even as Tarzan looked down, the huge lion, tired of toying with its prey, crouched low. Its muscular haunches quivered, and it leaped. But Tarzan was already hurtling through space, his great knife flashing in the air as he dove at the lion. Man and beast were one for a moment, an indistinguishable mass. And then, as the lion shuddered convulsively, Tarzan got to his feet and placed one foot on the dying animal. saved my life, just as you did my grandfather's. You, you were very foolish to leave the cabin. I couldn't stand listening to Andre any longer. When we left Becurata, I thought he was being kind, that he wanted to come with me so that he could help in case grandfather was in some kind of trouble. But now... Andre Devereaux is neither a safe nor a suitable companion for you on a long and dangerous safari. I know. I think I'm more afraid of him than I was of that line. But, well, I have to go on. And I shall come with you. You're not afraid of me, are you? Of course not. I think you'd inspire confidence and trust in anyone. Thank you. With you along, I'm sure we'll find my grandfather. They'd never call this a city back home. Well, this is an African city, although Lagos doesn't compare with some of our great cities, of course. Yeah, this office we search for, is uh, this it we are coming to? Yes, if Simon Carter sailed from Lagos, and every report seems to indicate that he did, they'd know all about it here. The Zabin Navigation Company is the only one operating ocean-going ships out of this port. It isn't much to look at, this navigation office. Oh, is there something I can do for you? You are Mr. Zabin? Yes. What do you want? We seek information, Mr. Zabin. Ah, a savage dressed in a leopard skin. Perhaps you'd like to know when the next of my ships is to sail into your jungle. We're trying to find out something about a traveler who may have sailed on one of your vessels. Oh? As closely as we can determine, it was about six months ago. They described him perfectly in the last uh, native village we passed, and it was only a few miles from here. Oh, what is the name of the man you want to find out about? Simon Carter. My grandfather. Do you have any record of his sailing? Yes, I remember him. He arrived at the dock only a few moments before the Pride of Lagos sailed. Despite the heavy carpet bag he carried, he ran the entire length of the dock. The carpet bag? Did he sail on the Pride of Lagos? Yes, and it carried six other passengers and quite a valuable cargo. Not valuable enough, however, to make salvage operations worthwhile. Salvage operations? The ship went down off the island of San Lorenca. All aboard were lost. still seems foolish coming out in this boat. Grandfather's dead. We know that now. Yes, and he won't have any more use for the treasure he had in that carpet bag. Bring the boat around a little. The reefs are dangerous here. I know these waters. Tarzan, I really don't want you to dive down to try to recover the treasure. It isn't that important. It is to me. If Tarzan doesn't get it, I'll hire a professional diver. I'll find that carpet bag and, and the wealthy tools. You see, Della, if we abandon our search, your friend Andre here will continue without us. For the investment of a few mining tools, you'll get all of the treasure your grandfather intended you to have. But deep sea diving is dangerous. I've always heard that. I know you're strong. Look, right below us, the hull of a ship. I hope the anchor will keep us from drifting too far. The water's so clear. I can almost make out the name on the prow. I can see the name. It's the Pride of Lagos, all right. I've never seen such clear water. The ship must be a hundred feet down. More than that, I think. Two hundred feet, perhaps. You can never descend to that depth without a diving suit. I can try. No, Tarzan. It isn't worth risking. Look at him. Go down. As though he were made of rock. Sometimes Tarzan seems so gentle. With that knife held between his teeth, he seems a complete savage. Do you think he can reach a sunken ship? I hope so. To save the expense of a diver, they get a lot of money. I can hardly see him now. The water's suddenly cloudy. Something seems to be stirring up the mud on the bottom. I can make Tarzan out now. He's about halfway down. Look, Andre, look, an octopus. Sacre bleu, it must be 25 feet across. He's got Tarzan. It is the end of the jungle, man. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, 
In just a moment, we shall continue with our exciting story of Tarzan. Two of the octopus' thick, slimy tentacles were already wrapped around Tarzan's body, their suckers holding him in like a steel grip. The other undulating arms gradually moved closer. Within a few seconds, they too would encircle the jungle man, squeezing out his life. And the huge devil fish had still another weapon, the poison that would paralyze its victim. Now the water was suddenly cloudy with the poison, but Tarzan fought to overcome it. He struggled upward, gasping for breath. His knife arm struggled free, and one of the tentacles was severed. As they reached the surface, the knife descended again, and the water was red with blood. Now Tarzan was almost unconscious from the poison. But years of jungle training made him strike out with his knife again and again and again. The suckers relaxed now. The remaining tentacles began to lose their strength. Tarzan grasped the side of the boat and pulled himself onto the deck. If he'd been killed, it would have been on my conscience all my life. It was unfortunate his encountering the octopus. If it hadn't been for that, we might have had the treasure by this time. I don't care now. If we never get it. If you would sign away any rights in your legacy, perhaps... She, she's signing nothing. All right. Then as soon as you have regained your breath... He's not going down again. I won't let him. Perhaps you're right, my dear. Suppose you remain here and take care of Tarzan. I will go ashore on the dinghy. Maybe I can find a diver. We can divide the expense equally from our respective shares of the treasure. All right. But do you think you'll find a deep-sea diver on a tiny native island like San Lorenzo? I took the precaution of making inquiries on the mainland. I understand there is a diver there, one with whom I believe I can make a, a satisfactory arrangement. By your accent, I would judge that you are far from home. I ain't asking you no questions. I don't want you to ask me none, see? But uh, certain things I must know. Your name, for one thing. Just call me Tex. Mais oui, that's enough of a name. And you are an experienced diver? I was one of the top divers in the States until... Well, never mind that. I'm a top-flight diver and I got all the equipment. But I warn you, I'll come high. I will pay you double your established rates, provided you will uh, play ball. I believe that is your American expression for... I get you. I'm a diver, not no trigger man. If I wanted a certain man shot, it would not be necessary to engage you for the job. I carry a gun and I know how to use it. <laughs> now, I have a more elaborate plan of which you shall be a part. Okay, but I want my money first. All right, I shall give you your regular wages now. Later, when the treasure is all mine, you shall get the rest. <laughs> Here comes Andre. I guess he got his diver. There's another figure in the boat, too. Would a diving suit protect him from another octopus? No, but I doubt that another will enter these waters while the scent of the dead octopus remains. Oh, there. Catch the line. Go ahead. Throw it. All right, I've got it. Merci. Uh, climb aboard, Tex. Thanks. Here you are, Mr. Devereux. I'll give you a hand. Tex, this is Della Carter. Yellow, this is Tex. I'm glad to know you, Tex. Glad is mine, man. And this is Tarzan, the gentleman I was telling you about. Glad to meet you, partner. I'll help you with your heavy equipment here. Well, handle it gentle, pal. That stuff can mean the difference between life and death. In my racket, you learn a lot about both. Tex is coming up now. Della, keep reeling in that air hose. If it ever gets fouled, he's finished. I'm being careful. I'm pulling him up. You think he has the treasure? I've been down long enough to have a dozen treasures. Help me haul him up. I can't go quickly enough. But he must have the treasure. Help me, Tarzan. But he said to bring him up slowly. I can't wait. He's too exciting. He's almost at the surface now. How far down did the dial say he'd gone? About 120 feet. If the water wasn't so clear... Yeah, he's reached the side of the boat. Help me lift him up. There's nothing in his hands. Ah, here you are, Tex. Now I unfasten your helmet. There. Tex, you look 
It's so strange. You, you broke me up pretty fast. What did you find? I, I went through most of the cabins. I, I, I found the old man you described. You found him? He was in his bunk, ma'am. I'm sure he didn't know what hit him. I don't think he even knew a moment's pain. It ain't a bad way to go. Never mind that. The carpet bag. Did you find it? I seen it all right, but it was lodged under a heavy timber. Too heavy for me to lift. What's wrong? A little case of the bends, I reckon, ma'am. Comes from being hauled up too fast. Next time we will raise you to the surface more slowly. There won't be no next time, partner. When you caught a case of the bends, you dasn't risk another dive for a spell. Hey, Tarzan. Perhaps Tex could tell you how to use the diving equipment. All right, I'll try it. No, Tarzan, please don't. Now, we've gone this far. We might as well complete our job. I can tell you exactly where that carpet bag is, Tarzan. With your muscles, you shouldn't have no trouble getting it. No trouble at all. Can you see him, Dix? Nope. Not today. Water's a little clouded this morning. He's been down there an awful long time. He's very strong. Nothing will happen to him. You sure, he's all right, ma'am. It seems to me you've recovered from your bends awfully quickly. What do you mean by crack like that? Dex, he's signaling with the lines. How many pulls? Quack. Speak English. Three times he jerks the lines. He wants to come up. If only there was some way of knowing whether he found the treasure. Why aren't you holding him up? I'd give my right arm for a telephone system to him. If you had first-class equipment, Tex, we'd be able Shut to... Shut up and it. turn off the compressor. You're shutting off his air. And you don't intend to pull him up until after he's dead. Keep quiet, or we'll finish you off too. Oh, no, you won't. Turn that compressor on again. My gun! You stole it out of my cabin! That's right. Now start the compressor and begin hauling Tarzan up right away. We ain't doing nothing of the kind, ma'am. I'll fix you, you fellow! Now if I can only get the compressor going and haul Tarzan to the surface... Killed two men, Tarzan. I don't think I can ever forget that. Well, you must try. Remember only that you saved my life. I still can't get over how you managed to work the lines and haul me to the surface. I didn't know I had that much strength either. Are you sure you're all right? Oh, I'm fine. And awfully glad to get out of that weighted suit. Well, shall we see what's in the carpet bag? Yes. Uh, catch is very badly rested. Oh, there it is. What are those things? Native jewelry, most. Not worth much, I'm afraid. Uh, that package there, wrapped in oil skin. Perhaps it contains the wealth he wrote of. It's a book of quotations and a letter to me. Look. Let's see. To my granddaughter, Della Carter, I leave the accumulation of a lifetime. A few gold dollars... Some interesting native jewelry and a wealth of wisdom which is contained in this collection of quotations. And this is what two men died for. Boiled down, it all amounts to a simple homily. Do not search the world for riches, for a man's treasures are on his own hearth. This is the wisdom I have accumulated during a lifetime, and this wealth of knowledge... I leave to you. In just a moment, a word about our next story of Tarzan. Nowhere in Africa is there a land more foreboding than Egypt. Bordered by the blue Mediterranean, the Red Sea, the great Libyan desert, and the inscrutable Sudan, it defies the advance of civilization. And those who ignore the warning of her gods are doomed. In our next story, we relate how Tarzan incurs 
The Curse of the Pharaohs. Tarzan, the transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. Commodore production.